So about a week ago, I told you that we were going to be doing a weird test and then that test didn't happen. And instead we did other things. And today we are doing the weird test and it might be dangerous. There might be explosions. I don't know. There's not explosions, but I will tell you what there is in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Open Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 316 of 365 days of soap. And today, as I said, is a weird test day. And that weird test day is called pouring raw soap batter into aluminum things to see what happens. And the reason why we're doing this is because we were doing a live a few months ago at this point, and a Sudzer had sent me a prepper vid on how to make soap and in one piece of the uh, soap making tutorial from this prepper guy uh, he poured into a muffin tin which we started wondering if it was aluminum or not and uh, then his end result of the soap was weird it was very splooji on the bottom like where it made direct contact with the muffin tin itself and uh, like gelatinous and weird in color. It looked like flan, flan, that thing. And it was interesting. And so we got to talking with the Sudzers and whatever during the live and thought, you know, I've never actually poured into aluminum before. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna see, you know, what happens, like, you know, visually. And we'll talk about what also chemically does happen when these things come and come. You get it. It's all in the video. So let's go there. Okay, so today is a weird test day and that test day is called pouring raw soap batter into aluminum things. And how do I know they're aluminum? Well, first I uh, looked up the code where I could and that Wilton one for sure is aluminum. That is aluminum foil, also aluminum. And that little copper bunt pan thing, it's uh, aluminum and it's vintage. So if my mom sees me doing this, she might get mad. But also, you know, I mean, you gave them to me. So you had to expect this was going to happen. Anyway, I am doing this because we looked at a prepper video that went viral on how to make your own soap a few months ago during a lie, a live. And that's is the container that this prepper made his soaps in and you know okay fine it's probably aluminum and all of the things and uh but this was his result and also note my face there actually note my face in both of those screen gab grabs because wow and we started talking with the sudzers on the live why did it do this and I realized that while I have mixed uh, aluminum and sodium hydroxide before to get crazy reactions in, you know, science classes, I've never actually poured soap into an aluminum container. And so I thought that maybe that is why his soap ended up looking really weird on, on the, the top with all the weird gelatinous and you know, whatever. And so I decided that I was going to use his exact recipe and 
also pour into aluminum containers and see what happens. I mean, for good or for ill. And so that's why we are doing what we are doing. Also, do you love my background? I went to do this outside because I actually have been present for, again, when aluminum and sodium hydroxide react and it's it can create hydrogen gas, which in and of itself in this small of an amount, actually not terrible for you, but in large amounts and in enclosed spaces, it, in all times, it is highly flammable, very volatile, but you know, in large amounts and in enclosed spaces, hydrogen gas can lead to, you know, a depletion of oxygen and then you pass out. And so I didn't want to do that. So it's outside on the table uh, that we used for the 4th of July. So there's that. Okay, and on to the results of this and let's, uh, ta-da! I mean, the soap looks good. Again, his exact recipe and I will link his video below so you can check everything out. And wow, look at that. No gelatinous weird mess. N not, n I mean, nothing wrong with this. It actually came out of the mold super, super easily too. And this is only about uh, a day or so old. I poured this and then I walked away and just let it hang out outside all night and most of the day. And yeah no problems whatsoever. No, no gelatinous mass on top of this. It looks like great soap. It feels like great soap. No problems. And I guess logically that totally makes sense for the exact same reason, you know, mixing your soap in a glass container makes all the sense in the world too. A lie interactions with whatever we've been through that. But when you are diluting, you know, your, your lye and we have raw soap batter, yes, and still has active angry lye in it too, also yes, but it's been so heavily diluted and saponification has started because we hit an emulsion, it's unlikely to react and do anything weird. Now, you know, just showing you that they're not magnetic. See, that's magnetic. That makes sense. But the ones that we poured into, not magnetic. And like I said, I also looked them up and this is these are all aluminum pans so fun so this test while fun still doesn't explain why this particular soap that we saw during a live ended up looking the way that it did and so i'm still very very confused by that i have literally never seen soap do that in my whole entire life and I've seen soap do weird things. And so I don't know. Oh, that lather's lovely. I mean, damn, go make his soap and pick up his recipe from his video just for that lather. That's beautiful. That's that's new soap. That's, you know, 24 hour so old soap. Don't hate that. But yeah, I don't know why. So if you guys, while this was a very fun, you know, test, don't get me wrong, and I was nervous enough about it to do this all outside, you know, just in case weird things happened. I didn't get the results that I wanted and also therefore have no new insight as to why his soap did what it did. So if you have any ideas as to why the, that soap went all wonky, let me know. Crap, that lather is amazing, though. I'm telling you, go pick up his, go get his recipe, because that's, that's epic. I have not seen a soap lather that well with such simple ingredients, you know, in a very long time. And I make a pretty good soap with a, well, I make a great soap with an excellent lather, but that's impressive. That's simple. That is a test, and I still don't know my answers, so you guys help me, please. And there it is, uh, some raw cold process soap batter poured into some aluminum things, or what we can reasonably assume are aluminum things. They're definitely not magnetic things. And checking the Wilton, um, you know, website, aluminum, uh, as you can see, nothing bad happened. The soap didn't do weird things. It actually slid out of the molds amazingly well. I've never experienced that with anything other than 
well, I've really never experienced that. So that was cool. And uh, yeah, it was a fun time. We also got to, you know, see my sweet, sweet 4th of July background because I, I poured it outside just in case weird things happen. And so there's that. But yeah, that was actually a lot of fun. And now you have a visual on what could happen and what could happen is nothing. But also, you know, pay attention to what I talked about in the video because there is a reason why you don't pour in aluminum. And that reason is reasonably valid. Unlike, you know, people saying that you should never mix soap in glass containers. That's not valid. That's dumb. Be safe. It's better safe than sorry because of the gas, whatever. It's all a thing. But yes, I uh, had a ton of fun with this one. I hope you guys did too. I appreciate my Sudzers for being here, for subscribing, for commenting, for engaging and doing all the things. I really appreciate you guys. You are the reason that I exist. That is a fact. Thank you. I am out of here for today, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for not a test day, but still a round of soapy fun. Fun. Bye.